Bullet Rhapsody right here at Kamikaze 2012. It's a lot of fun, and I'm with someone who you might not recognize the face of, but you'll know the works of. It's Kevin J. Anderson. He's worked on Star Wars, Dune, and a whole load of original novels, and he's here, right here. That's awesome. I'm standing in a corner by my books, yes. Now, uh, first thing I have to ask, and I've recently been getting back to these books, I've been reading the Dune books again. What was it like going into a series that has such a claim to it? You know, Frank Herbert is loved by many sci-fi fans. How did it feel getting into that world? The well, Dune was always my favorite science fiction book of all time. I read it again and again when I was in college and, and studied them, and I read all the Frank Herbert books, even to the point where I read the new books as they came out, from God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, Chapter House Dune. And then Frank Herbert passed away and left the story just, just hanging there on a cliffhanger. And I went on to become a, my own published uh, novelist, writing Star Wars, and being nominated for several awards, and publishing my own books. And that's when I got in touch with Brian Herbert to carry on the legacy and to finish the story that Frank Herbert had done. And during the process of it, we found a bunch of Frank Herbert's notes and we found some outlines and everything, and that's what we used to base our new novels on. But it really is like the coolest thing in the world to be working in my favorite science fiction universe, looking at notes that Frank Herbert left behind and expanding the stories. But the other really, really great thing for me is to find so many other readers that have picked up the new Dune books, and because of that, then they'll read the Frank Herbert books. Uh, now, my other question I really have is, I remember back, I think it was in the 90s, you were working on several Star Wars books at a time, several Star Wars comics at a time, and uh, I believe you also had the uh, Young Jedi Knight books as well, all coming out at the same time. And the comics. And the comics. How did you do all that? By watching the movies a lot, and by working a lot. Well, I had... We were doing the Young Jedi Knights books. I was doing the Tales of the Jedi comics with Tom Beach. I was doing um, the Tales of the Mos Eisley Cantina anthology, Tales of Java's Palace anthology, Tales of the Bounty Hunters anthology, and Dark Saber and the Jedi Academy books. And so my life was kind of Star Wars for a while. But I also wrote my own books in the midst of all that. And then uh, Chris Carter from the X-Files had read my Star Wars books and liked those, so he asked me to write X-Files books. So it was one thing leads to another leads to another. It was quite quite a busy and amazing couple of years. How did you have enough time? I didn't want to say no when they asked me to do these great projects. So I'm, I worked a lot and I had a lot of fun with it. And, and when you're living in the Star Wars universe, it just the stories come naturally. I know all the different alien races and the histories and the weapons and the ships and, and, and frankly I couldn't do it now. I've kind of fallen out of touch with the, with the continuing expansion. Um, so I, I just, I come to Kamikaze like this and like all day long fans come up and say that they learned to read reading the Star Wars books in mind or that they named their kids after characters and that, that's kind of weird but, but. I remember seeing a little list once of, uh, I don't remember what, some Star Wars character became like one of the popular names. It was Jassine, uh, King Jassine got the game. A oh, wow. popular name there for a while. Uh, and I think Anakin at one point or another had a, was a name that was getting some popularity. My favorite character in one of your characters is uh, X-Ray Kun. How did you come up with this guy? The interesting thing was with when I was doing my Jedi Academy trilogy, one of the villains was, was the dark spirit of a long dead Dark Lord of the Sith. At the same time, I started working with Tom Beach on the comics, or, or was writing some introductions to it, and he was writing Tales of the Jedi, which took place 4,000 years before the movies. And my long-dead Dark Lord of the Sith was, I don't know, dead for thousands of years. So we yeah. figured, why not have him come up at the same time as this other Tales of the Jedi series? So we worked together to write the origin of this character, and writing those comics to develop his character fed back into writing the novels of Jedi Academy, so it was all like a, a multimedia thing going on at the same time, and, and many stories. That's pretty cool. Uh, what's your newest book? My newest book? Um, I just wrote a novel with Neil Peart based on the new Rush album. It's a big concept album with steampunk, fantasy, adventure, lost cities, and pirates, and airships. That's really something that I just love doing and I'm amazed by it. And I've got a brand new series featuring Dan Shamble, zombie private detective. And so it's a humorous horror. <laughs> he solves uh, cases with mummies and werewolves and vampires. And, uh, it's just a laugh out loud funny thing. So that's Death Warmed Over and Clockwork Angels are my two newest ones. Now, were you a big Rush fan beforehand? Oh, I've been a Rush fan since I was like in high school. And 
that was a long time ago. So, what's your favorite Rush album? Ooh, Race Under Pressure. Nice. And, and Clockwork Angels, the two of them, because because Race Under Pressure's inspired stuff, Clockwork Angels inspired stuff. That's really great. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you, sir. Thank you.